Hello and welcome to this ACCA AFM presentation on foreign currency risk management. And on this short but important video, I want to cover the area of exchange rate presentation as far as the exam is concerned. Now, the exchange rates I'm talking about here are predominantly the spot rates but also the forward rates will also be presented in the same format that we are talking about below. Exchange rates will be presented within AFM in the format of what you call the bid offer presentation. Bid being the low rate, offer being the high rate. So that's the first one, the bid offer presentation. But they can be presented in two formats depending on which currency is going to be locked at the value of one, which we call the product currency. I like to call it the product currency, which is then going to be valued by the item, which is the variable currency. And this depends whether you've got the indirect presentation or the direct presentation. If I was talking about what happens predominantly in real life. You would say in real life, you see virtually all the currencies presented in an indirect format. If you've got, for example, an, I mean, I've got an Apple phone. If you went on the currency app on what is going to be your phone, you will see if you put in the pound locked at one, it would then tell you the value of all of the foreign currencies that you want what is the pound worth on what is going to be the market or whatever your currency is, lock it at one and it will tell you what the current, your, the other values are going to be. So the indirect presentation is the more normal one. That's the one where you'll see in a moment that the currency locked at one is your home currency. The direct is the alternative one where effectively you have what is going to be the foreign currency locked at the value of one. In the exam, You've just got to read the question very, very carefully. So let's start with the indirect presentation. In these examples, we are a UK based company and clearly our home currency is the pound. So as I said, for the indirect presentation, we have the pound locked at one. The pound locked at one and Presented in the format $1.50 in this case to $1.5500 per unit of the pound. You might say, why have I done four decimal places? Well, for the majority of world currencies, the pound, the euro, the Swiss franc, they generally are presented to what is me four decimal places. So the pound's locked at one, low, high presentation. We've got to pick the correct rate. So we know that in this case, we need to get everything converted into sterling. So if we've got a payment to make, we want to know what the payment equivalent would be in sterling. If we've got a receipt coming in, we need to know what that receipt would be in sterling. So if we know we're dealing with a dollar payment, we've got to divide. If you've got a dollar receipt, you've got to divide that will take us back into sterling. So we know we've got to divide the dollars by the rate to get us back into sterling. But which rate do we use? First of all, let's understand you know, how these rates are dictated. Where do they come from? They come from the money market. And the money markets are about the banks. Now step away from this for a second. Forget the banks for a second. Imagine you own a corner shop and you sell lots of products in there, including water. So you go to the wholesaler and buy water at say 50p a, you know, 50p for what is going to be a, a bottle. And then you sell it on in your store at let's say 60p. Bought it for 50p, sold it for 60p, you've made 10p profit. So you have traded in water. That is what the bank is doing. The bank is trading in sterling. So what does it do? It buys sterling at the low rate of 150. It sells sterling at the high rate of 155. And it makes a tidy profit 
on that particular transaction. Okay, but we've got to look at this from the UK business point of view. If the bank is buying the pound, that means the UK business must be selling the pound to the bank and in exchange for selling the pound, they are receiving American dollars. They are receiving dollars for the pounds they're selling to the bank. Why or oh why would a UK business need to get hold of dollars? One reason only, payment. They've got to make a payment in American dollars. And because they've got to make a payment in American dollars, they need to get hold of American dollars. Okay, if the bank is selling the pound, that means that effectively the UK business must be buying sterling and passing dollars to what is going to be the bank, pushing dollars away, passing dollars to that particular bank. Where would a UK business get dollars from? They've received dollars. They've received dollars. They've got hold of dollars, possibly from a customer that sent them dollars. It needs to exchange those dollars. So they would have to exchange them at 155. So that does the full explanation of why the payment would be on the left hand side and the receipt would be on the right hand side. But I like to use a fast rule here. And my fast rule that I work on is shown in orange on the right here and is called the R&R &R rule, the R&R. &R. That's not rest and recuperation. It's, it's what it says above it. The receiver of foreign currency divides by the right-hand rate. The receiver of foreign currency divides by the right-hand rate. And you can see that here that effectively, if I'm receiving foreign currency, I'm dividing by the right-hand rate, which means if I'm not receiving, I must be paying, which means I divide by the left-hand rate. So to me, though everything here in blue and red explains the whole concept to you, in orange here on the right, you get a nice fast rule. If it's indirect pre presentation, the receiver of foreign currency divides by the right-hand rate, which means automatically those who are paying are going to use the left-hand rate. Okay, let's move to the direct presentation. Now, when we move to the direct presentation, this time it is the foreign currency that is locked at one. Remember, we are still based in the UK. Yeah, We are a UK business. But the foreign currency is locked at one and it is measured in the home currency. It's measured in this case in sterling, again, low 64.52, high 0.667. OK, let's again look at this from the point of view of the bank. The bank is now not trading pounds, it's trading dollars. And again, just like the old shopkeeper, old the shopkeeper, because shopkeeper could be young as well, yeah? The shopkeeper, right, is going to buy water at a low price, sell water at a high price, and make a profit. Buy water at 64.52, sell it at triple six seven, and make what is going to be a nice, tidy profit. So, if the bank is buying the dollar, that means that basically the business is selling them the dollar. Why would the UK be business selling them the dollar? Because they've received dollars. They've received dollars. A customer has sent them some dollars and they need to get rid of them. Yeah. But you know now you now know because if you receive dollars and it's 0 0.6452 per dollar, you've definitely got to multiply. You've definitely, definitely got to multiply to convert from dollars into what is going to be sterling. If the bank is selling what is going to be dollars, that means the UK business is buying dollars. Only one reason why a UK business would buy dollars, and that means they would be paying in what is going to be a foreign currency. They've got a payment in foreign currency. So if I've got to pay in dollars, and I mean direct, 
I'm multiplying by 0 0.667. If I have received dollars of I'm in direct, I'm multiplying by 0 0.6452. And the shortcut I use here is called direct X. And the reason why I say direct X is direct multiply. If it's direct, multiply, right? If it's direct, what is going to be multiplied? So you can now see basically what the main rules are. And you can see why I'm treated this particular topic separately. Yeah, I'm going to do a little example as well. But you can see why I've dealt with this topic separately because of its importance to the syllabus. Understanding the idea of direct and indirect bid and offer rate is really critical to ensure that you pick up the correct values as far as the conversions are concerned. And these shortcuts, R&R and, R and direct, will be of help to you, very much of help to you within what is going to be the exam questions. OK, so let's take a look at a very small illustration which shows you how we can use these particular rates. OK, then, so I said choosing the correct rate is absolutely critical as far as what the exam is going to be concerned. And that's why I said to you, just make sure you read the question very carefully about whether the rates are in the indirect or the direct format, and whether you're dealing with a receipt or a payment as far as foreign currency is concerned. So here I've got a very small example to complete this short video, where Morgan is based in the UK. So its home currency is sterling and it is due to receive 250,000 American dollars. So I'm going to use both rates are going to come into play here. I'm going to use both presentations, both indirect and direct in this situation. Now, you know that if I'm dealing with what is going to be the indirect presentation, a receiver of foreign currency can use the right-hand rate. And you can see by using that right-hand rate there, that effectively, if a receiver is using the right-hand rate there, they automatically use the left-hand rate when it's going to be the direct presentation. So I know what numbers I've got to utilize. So all I now need to do is go into what is going to be my spreadsheet, and show you how to utilize those numbers in what is going to be this particular situation. So here we have the spreadsheet using the indirect presentation. I'm going to take the 250,000, one, two, three. I'm going to divide it by the right hand rate, which I know was one point, and it was $1, looking at 55, $1, 55, zero, zero. Enter and we get 161,290. So we would get 161,290 if we're looking at what is going to be the direct, this is the indirect presentation. For the indirect presentation, receiver of foreign currency uses the right hand rate. Receiver of foreign currency uses the right hand rate, divide by the right hand rate for indirect presentation, and I've got 161,290. For direct, it's direct X, direct X. Okay, then. So equals 250,000 multiplied by 0.6452. Multiplying by that left-hand rate, enter, and I get 161,300. And the difference is purely down to rounding. Just purely down to rounding is what the difference between those values are going to be. And let me just put those into the notes and then just tidy up this short presentation as far as exchange rates are concerned. So you can see here, I've just imported the, the answer into what is going to the notes. So you've got a, a, you know, you can see it there as well. One last point just to, to mention here, and I think some of you may have picked this up when looking at the numbers. I'll just try to get them on the screen together. How do you change from an indirect presentation to a direct presentation? Now, if you want to move from indirect to direct, what you've got to do 
is take the indirect presentations and divide them into one. You've got to take the reciprocal. You've got to take the reciprocal of $1.50 and you've got to take the reciprocal of $1.55. So divide the $1.50 into one and you'll get 0 0.667. Divide what is going to be 155 into one and you'll get 0 0.6452. But because of bid offer presentation, low offer presentation, you've got to switch them over. So divide that into one and move it to the right. Divide that into one and move it into the left. And you've got what is going to be the direct presentation. And, and occasionally you might need to do that. You know, occasionally you might need to do that. Most situations you won't, but occasionally it will be needed. And that completes this short video presentation, but this important presentation dealing with how exchange rates will be shown in the AFM exam.